Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webcast, Taking the Pain Out of PCI Compliance. I'm Kate Carson, Marketing Event Specialist at Tripwire, and I'm excited to be part of this presentation today. Before we start, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. First, make sure that your audio is streaming correctly. Please note that the audio portion will stream through your PC or laptop speakers. Be sure to check your speaker volume, the volume setting on your computer, and your headset to ensure that it is turned on and volume is at an audible level. Today's webcast is presented using a slide deck. You can click on the expand rectangle on the top right corner of the slide area to enlarge. If you're not seeing the slide movement in your console, you can try refreshing your browser. If you're experiencing any technical difficulties, please click on the Help widget. It's the question mark icon on your console and covers most common technical issues. If you have a question during the presentation for our presenter, click on the Q&A widget and submit your question. We will have a Q&A session at the end. Lastly, I'll be sending out a link to the on-demand version of this webcast and a link to the slides. Also, you may earn a CPE credit for attending today. Now let's get on with the presentation. Our speaker today is Aaron Warner, Systems Engineer Manager at Tripwire. Aaron has been a systems admin in the mid-enterprise space for over 10 years in different industries, including manufacturing, distribution, and state government. For 21 years, he was in the Air Force, eight of those years in the cybersecurity space. He has been with Tripwire for four years. So now, without further delay, I'll turn it over to Aaron Warner. Take it away, Aaron. All right, thanks, Kate. So today, uh, we're going to go over our agenda here. So first, we're going to talk about Tripwire PCI products and where Tripwire can help. Top three PCI mistakes with a focus on Tripwire Enterprise. We're going to go into Tripwire Enterprise and do a little PCI demo, and then we'll have some Q&A at the end. All right, so you all have heard of Tripwire. Yes, it's voluntary monitoring. That's what we've been known for and have built our reputation on. We also have other solutions that fulfill the PCI requirements for log aggregation and correlation and vulnerability management. If you'd like further information on these products, please contact your sales team. With our solution set, we can help with all 12 PCI requirements. We want a further breakdown of what our solutions cover for PCI, we can provide that documentation as well. Notice that this slide has got blue colors to it, the, the areas that we help validate PCI, yellow where we provide information for, and the orange is where we support. So the top three mistakes that provide PCI pain. Number one, set and forget file integrity monitoring. Two, periodic PCI assessment. And number three, buying only a PCI solution and not leveraging the product for security. So mistake number one, set and forget file integrity monitoring. So what is this set and forget? This is a product that is almost as good as shelfware product was set up to look for changes and then left alone. If the QSA were to ask the question of, show me the unauthorized changes that happen in this environment on a specific day, this set and forget customer would fail. So why is this important? Everyone knows that changes are happening all the time on our systems. We need a way to weed through the noise to find the critical change. We all know that when the system is too noisy, a ton of notifications are coming in, we tend to ignore them. Let's take a look at this guidance call. This change detection solutions such as file integrity monitoring tools check for changes, additions, and deletions to critical files, and notify when such changes are detected. Not implemented properly in the output of the change detection solution monitor, a malicious individual could add, remove, or alter configuration file contents operating system programs, or application executables. Unauthorized changes, if undetected, could render existing security controls 
ineffective and or result in cardholder data being stolen with no, percept no perceptible impact to normal processing. Right? Very, very bad. So let's focus on these authorized changes since they will help control the noise and help take the pain out of PCI compliance. First, we'll need to talk about ITIL. What is this ITIL thing and how does it relate to authorized changes? ITIL is a guide on IT best practices. Visible Ops is the result of more than three years of studying high-performing IT operations and security organizations by the ITPI. Visible Ops illustrates how organizations might replicate the ITIL processes of these high-performing organizations in just four steps. I've just listed the first step. In order to get the other phases and the book, you'll have to use your own Google Foo for that. So on a personal note, I had not heard of ITIL until I came to Tripwire. I'd used some of these processes in my previous system admin operational roles with some of the companies that I've worked with, with just as best practices, but I didn't really understand the full impact of the why I would want to do all these. So if you have a standardized process, it's much easier to figure out what falls outside of that process and really highlights what the unauthorized changes are in an environment. So for example, if you migrate from just making those ad hoc changes to implementing a specific change time window, even if it's on a, a daily basis, it's much easier to notify or report on a change that happens outside that window. So does the pen test team that's trying to break into your systems know about that time window when they exploit your systems and make a change? Doubtful. And it's easy to spot. So we'll see more on authorized changes in the product demo. Mistake number two, periodic PCI assessment. Take a look at the current state of affairs of PCI. Merchants' compliance is increasing, but 80% of merchants still fail in term assessments. Only one-third sustain compliance year over year, meaning that we're not sustaining controls. So just, that just because you passed a PCI, PCI audit doesn't mean you don't have to worry about PCI anymore. You're spending too much time on PCI because you're audit-focused. You're not really doing continuous compliance. So let's talk about real-life compliance cycles. So this is a visual on your operations and systems over spe specific points in time. Audit occurs at a specific time, and after audit, the level of compliance can drift as your environment changes. This means lots of effort is given before that next audit, increasing costs. Imagine you have a continuous and automated compliance effort. The cost of obtaining the next audit is significantly lower and security risk is minimized. This is the principle that Tripwire Enterprise operates under, using our baseline and only sending change delta information across while mapping those changes to your PCI policies automatically. This continuous automated response saves you the time and bandwidth of massive periodic scans thus taking a lot of pain out of PCI compliance. Take number three, find only a PCI solution and not leveraging the product for security. So what is the purpose of PCI compliance? Well, it's security. It's the basic blocking and tackling that is needed to harden and monitor systems for compromise. Why not leverage the investment that you have in Tripwire Enterprise and use it for security purposes as well? Uh, would you know if your external facing web servers were hacked? Who would let you know? Your customers? Do you know Tripwire Enterprise has out of the box checks for leading indicators of breach? Do you know, do you need to harden your systems according to box ISO, CIS, NIST, or perhaps your own custom security hardening guideline? 
Want to integrate Turbar Enterprise with a malware hash repository? How about integrating with an IOC type of service such as CrowdStrike or Soltra? Turbar Enterprise can also send ch change data out to log and SIM solutions other than Turbar Log Center. For example, we have a free AMP, we have a free app, sorry, for Splunk. All right, so I'm going to talk about the architecture for Tripwire Enterprise here real quick, kind of just get that base understanding of how it works, and then we'll move over into a brief PCI product demo. All right, so Tripwire Enterprise is a software-based solution. It can also install into virtual environments as well. It installs on Windows or Linux, and then we use a database backend for that change information. So you can either use MySQL, Microsoft SQL, or Oracle. Then for file systems, we install an agent within those file systems. That agent gives us the ability to do that near real-time change detection. It also allows us to grab the who information on who's making the change on those systems without you having to turn on auditing at the operating system level. So on those Windows systems, you don't have to turn on the object access success or you don't have to turn on audit B on the Linux side in order to get that information. Really saves on all that noise going out to the, the log and SIM type solutions. And we can also monitor network devices using either Telnet, or preferably SSH. Log into those de devices a lot like if you're running PuTTY, run native commands against those network devices, capture the output of those commands, show you changes on that over time as well. We can also monitor databases, directory services, desktops, hypervisors, and applications as well. And we do this by using it's what we call as a rule set. We have out-of-the-box rule sets for common files and directories on the Windows side, registry settings. We can also run native commands against the operating system and capture the output of those commands. Commands can be really simple, like a netstat command, or it could be a more complex command using native scripting languages. When we run those rules for the first time, it creates a baseline in the database backend, and then after that, only when a change happens do we send that change delta information across. Small attribute information, such as hash value, date and timestamp, permission information, we can grab content within text-based files and bring that across as well. And then what we'll do is we'll take that same change information that we've gathered, map it up with, say, PCI or other hardening guide guidelines and let you know, hey, you know that change that just happened on that system? It took you out of that hardened or compliant state. All right, so now what I'll do here is I'm going to share out my desktop. And this will take uh, about a minute or so. So while this is loading, just a reminder that we will have build the capability to send out this webcast and slide deck. All right, so now it should be loaded for everyone. For some of you, this is probably looks really similar, right? And you look pretty familiar. So this is the Tripari Enterprise Console, the web-based user interface. Have this opened up to a PCI dashboard. These PCI dashboards have role-based access, so you can give your PCI auditor access to a dashboard that you set up specifically for them. Hide all these other dashboards, all these tabs up here at the top, and all these charts and graphs that you see here. These are just a few of the out-of-the-box customizable reports that we can add to dashboards. And all the reports I show you here today can be emailed out automatically to specific users or distro groups as well. All right, so what I'll do here is I'll cover the change management piece first, satisfies that PCI 11.5D requirement. Also take a look and see how our systems map up to the PCI standard itself. Take a quick peek at the policy engine and see just some of those policies and hardening guidelines we have installed in my environment. 
And then towards the end there, I'll pop over into the security dashboard and take a look at how that is set up as well. All right, so for this change management piece, satisfying that PCI 11.5 requirement, we have two commonly used types of reports here. We have an authorized versus unauthorized changes report, and then a suspicious changes by platform report. Now we see a lot of our customers use the authorized versus unauthorized changes report because this is a great way to categorize the expected change that's happening in our environment. It's authorized. So we can focus in on those unauthorized changes that fall outside of our normal business processes. So how do we make those changes authorized, right? So what we use is a promotion process. So as a change comes in, you'll either automatically promote that change to the baseline, making it the new baseline or the new known good, making it green in this graph here, or you'll manually promote that change. You manually promote those unauthorized changes shown in the red. So what are some of those authorized processes, right? So we can integrate in with change management ticketing systems. The way this would work is change would come in, take a look in this change management ticketing system. If there's a ticket in there for that change, we'd take that ticket number, associate that in Tripwire Enterprise, so that you can reference that later on, we'd promote that change to the baseline automatically. And we also have other auto promotion items as well, such as reconciliation of hot fixes and patches. So the way this would work is, say on the Windows side, we're going to detect when a hotfix is installed, all the files associated with it. We'll actually reach out to Microsoft's website, go to TechNet, download the manifest for that specific hotfix. So that manifest will give us the files that are included with that specific hotfix, so we can automatically promote those as well. And then we can also do some of these auto promotions based upon, say, who's making the change, time frames, such as maintenance windows. We can also take a look at reference nodes as well. Reference node would be a system that's in a test or a dev environment where you'd make most of your changes there first. And as you're promoting those changes in that environment, based upon their hash values, as we're seeing those hash values being rolled out into production, automatically promote those as well. So this is a way that we categorize those authorized changes automatically so that when we go into this report, we still have the capability to go in there and take a look at authorized changes, but typically on a day-to-day -day basis, we're going to take a look at those unauthorized changes that fall outside of those normal business processes. Drill down further into this report, now we get more of a mid-level mid management type of view across the platform here where we can start seeing where this change happened on this Linux server for this tiefighter.txt, to user Leia added that file in there at this date and time. We scroll down in this report, you can see that we have a bunch of different operating systems and devices and applications in it. And I can drill down further as well. I have an example here of content within a text-based file. On the Solaris side, this could absolutely be on the Windows side as well. So it could be like a host file or INI file. Line 30 here, we can see where this user Luke has been added in. Green plus mark would indicate that. If then a removal would be a blue minus, change the red star. We can see what attributes we're taking a look at to determine whether a change is taking place, who made the change, the Etsy password file on this server at this same time. Now, if we want to take a look at a more interactive type of view into this same environment here, on our elements view. Now, from here, what we can see is the type of rule that's being used. Then we can also get more historical data as well. If I take a look at one of these changes here, this Etsy password change on this Alderaan system, Go to my history tab. This is where I'll actually see baseline modification information over time. This is also where I can do some comparisons and say, you know, 
I know everything was fine with that file when I did that original baseline. Show me the difference between then and now. Now we'll get a side-by-side -side comparison of what's changed. We have that little cheat sheet down here. Tells you what tells you what those colors mean. So now we can easily see where this user Vader has been added in. What's also nice about this view is that you know this file could have hundreds of lines in it. In this view, we're only going to show you what's changed. That way, you don't have to sift through all that information. But perhaps if you want to take a look at the full content of that file, that here as well. All right. Next out all these windows here. And let me move over and talk about the, the hardening and policy side of the product. So as all these changes come in on the change management side, we store that in our database backend. Then we, what we do is we take that same change information that we've gathered, map it up with these policy sets and hardening guidelines. And what this allows us to do is run these reports, run this Windows report. And it says, well, according to PCI version 3.0 on uh, Windows servers 2008 that are R2, uh, each requirement within PCI, where do we map? Pass and failed test per node and their compliance status. And if I scroll down further in this report, you can see that we support Windows Server 2012, R2 as well, and for PCI 3.1. So this really allows us to go into those failed tests. This is where we can start getting more detailed information such as, you know, out of PCI, what is that exact requirement? Step-by-step -step instructions on how to fix the part that's failed. And then on the system itself, where it's actually failed that particular part of the policy set or hardening guideline. A lot of times we'll see our customers use this as a punch card. They would set this up on a weekly schedule, have this automatically emailed out to their junior system admins. And then as those junior system admins start going through that punch card there, you'll start seeing where your pie chart starts turning mostly green. And your trend will start moving further up to the right over time as well. All right, so take a look into that policy engine. We can see that in my system here, I have just a few of these policy sets and hardening guidelines that we have. Some for, center, for Internet Security, IEC, IRS, NIST, HIPAA, NERC, NIST, and a bunch of other ones as well. We actually download these per policy, then per operating system, device, and so forth. If I expand out PCI here, you can see that we have 2.0, 3.0, 3.1 different applications and different types of operating systems and so forth as well. Wide variety of coverage, huge library of not only PCI, but a bunch of hardening guidelines, not only for uh, some of those standards for security, but we also have hardening guidelines for, for Windows and VMware as well. So now what I'll do is I'll just pop over into this security dashboard real quick. And now we can see that for this security dashboard, we have three sections here. We have a changes of interest section, policy-based changes, and then breach detection. So for changes of interest, this is really just showing us that we can narrow down the information that we want to see in reports. So for this report here, I'm taking a look at changes made by privileged accounts. So if it's not typical in your environment for the admin or root account to make changes, you should see just a flat graph down here at the bottom. And then if you have a change made by that account, you really want to investigate that, right? You could have an email notification sent out. You could have a syslog sent out to your SIM. Do some correlation there as well. Lots of options. And we have another authorized versus unauthorized changes report. This one's set up just for Windows and Linux systems. One that we just walked through is across all platforms. It's just showing you that we can narrow down that information further if we want. 
And then for breach detection, we have some out-of-the-box rule sets. We call them our cybercrime rules, looking for those leading indicators of breach. That way you can on those immediately as well. And then for policy-based changes for Windows systems, you can tell your window, when your Windows certs have expired or they're about to expire. And then we've put some criteria around Windows shares. So now what's interesting here is that for network shares, down here towards the bottom on a breach detection, um, there are no changes have been made there, right? But we're failing some tests under those window shares. We open that up, you can see what that criteria is. Just close empty file shares, close inactive file shares, restrict access to file shares. Systems are passing and failing. And if we go into one of those failed tests, we'll get more detailed information where it says, hey, close those file shares that haven't been updated within the last 30 days. That have an unnecessary file share, right? And if we go down here further, we can see the actual information here on, hey, has this been updated recently? No, here's the last date and time. And then here's all the information on the share. Even though we don't have any changes made to those network shares, we can put some further criteria around them to keep them a little more secure. All right, so now this concludes the, uh, the demo portion of presentation here. Out of that. And here really is where Tripwire as the, the PCI difference. We've got deep PCI expertise and experience. We were actually written into the original spec for file integrity monitoring. Of course, they've taken that out since then. And we aren't just a FIM product, which we've been known for for a long time. Uh, auditors have confidence in our solutions. And we have a very comprehensive PCI offering that is integrated to streamline compliance. All right, so now I'll answer some questions. Take me a minute here to open up our question box here. Okay, so one of the questions that have come in is, um, do you cover point of sale solutions? Uh, we do. Uh, we have many customers that have point of sale solutions. We also have a point of sale prepackaged content uh, offering as well. Look here at any here. Oh, does a tripwire enterprise block or prevent change? Uh, we don't block or prevent change. We're more of a detection type of product, right? And on the security side, we're known for a uh, host intrusion detection. It goes along the lines of the security dashboard that I, I showed on this uh, presentation as well. And I think I've got time for one more here. Uh, here's a good one. So who is watching the washer? Meaning if a change happens in the tripwire console itself, is that recorded somewhere? Uh, yes. So uh, we do have a log file that records everything that, say, an administrator were to do within the console itself. And you can also have that information sent out via TCP syslog as well. All right, so um, thank you, everyone, for joining this presentation. Uh, back to you, Kate. Thank you very much, Aaron. Uh, so thank you to you, Aaron Warner, for presenting today and giving us all of that great information. And thank you, audience, for joining us today. As I mentioned earlier, I will be sending out a link to the on-demand webcast and to the slides as well, so you will get a copy of those. Uh, you may reply to that email that you see if you'd like to earn a CPE credit for attending the webcast today. 
We hope that you'll join us for future webcasts. We have an exciting webcast regarding ransomware on April 27th. So visit tripwire.com to find out about future events like that, and that information will be in the follow-up email to this webcast. Also check out our award-winning blog, State of Security. So I want to thank you and wish you a great day.